any habit under any conditions. The tool that I'm referring to is something called task bracketing. And the neural circuits associated with task bracketing are basically the neural circuits that are going to allow you to learn any new type of habit or break any habit that you'd like to break. We have in our brain a set of neural circuits that fall under the umbrella term of the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia are involved in action execution, meaning doing certain things, and action suppression, not doing certain things. In the experimental realm, these are referred to as go, meaning do, or no go, don't do certain things. And some of us fall more into the category of we find it very easy to do certain things, but harder to not do other things. Some people have a lot of no-go type circuits that are very robust and they have a lot of behavioral constraint, but they have a harder time getting into action. And some people have a perfect balance of both, but I've never met one of those people. So again, drawing from, and more or less paraphrasing from this beautiful review that I described earlier in annual review, annual review of psychology, excuse me, by Wood and Runger, Task bracketing involves a particular set of neural circuits within the basal ganglia. So I'm gonna describe this here again, paraphrasing a sensory motor loop. Sensory means just input coming in about sight, sounds, tastes, etc. And then the motor systems, the systems of the brain and body that generate action, taking that information and generating action. So it turns out that there's an area of our basal ganglia called the dorsolateral striatum. We can use the acronym DLS. Again, dorsal lateral striatum. Dorsal means up, lateral means to the side, so dorsolateral, and striatum is a subdivision of the basal ganglia. And it's very important for the establishment of behaviors that are associated with a habit, but not necessarily the habit itself. And beautiful studies in both animals and humans that record the electrical activity in the dorsolateral striatum find that the dorsolateral striatum is associated, meaning it becomes active at the beginning of a particular habit and at the very end and after a particular habit. Hence the phrase task bracketing, it brackets the habit. Now other sets of neurons are going to be active during the actual execution of the habit. But what the literature on the dorsal lateral striatum tells us is that we have particular circuits in our brain that are devoted to framing the events that happen just before and as we initiate a habit and just after and as we terminate a habit. In other words, it acts as a sort of marker for the habit execution, but not the execution of the habit per se. Now, this is very important because task bracketing is what underlies whether or not a habit will be context dependent or not whether or not it will be strong and likely to occur even if we didn't get a good night's sleep the night before, even if we're feeling distracted, even if we are not feeling like doing something emotionally, or if we are you know, completely overwhelmed by other events. If the neural circuits for task bracketing are deeply embedded in us, meaning they are very robust around a particular habit, well, then it's likely that we're gonna go out for that zone two cardio no matter what, that we're gonna brush our teeth no matter what. In fact, brushing our teeth is a pretty good example because for most people, even if you got a terrible night's sleep, even if everything in your life is going wrong, chances are, unless you're very depressed, if you're gonna leave to work or even if you're not, that you're going to still carry out the behavior of brushing your teeth in the morning. I would hope so, actually. But you are probably less likely to perform particular habits that are, not what you deem as necessary. But if you think about it, brushing your teeth, exercise, eating particular foods, maybe engaging socially in particular ways, you are the one that places any kind of value assessment on which ones are essential and which ones are negotiable. So task bracketing sets a, a neural imprint, a kind of a fingerprint in your brain of this thing has to happen at this particular time of day, so much so that it's reflexive. And as we'll talk about in a moment, there's a way that 